This is Backyard Tech. The Projection PC System Build. In part one, we sorted out all the hardware, organized the motherboard, the case, updated the BIOS, got the card reader installed, got it all connected up, checked over all the hardware, job done. Now we've got to do something about the operating system. Welcome to part two of the Projection PC System Build. This one, let's get Windows installed. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, welcome to part 2 of the Projection PC System Build and as I said at the top of the video in part 1 we got the hardware all sorted out, so that's done. Now we've got to get Windows installed. Before we get to actually doing Windows though, obviously again I need to clarify and justify the reasonings behind putting Windows on it. I've already had my head chewed off in comments that are not being published due to language and I'm going to justify why it has to run Windows. Now I was hoping to put Linux on it, don't get me wrong, I would love to have put Linux on it, but I've been told and ordered to install Windows because the program that's going to run on this computer is a Windows based program that apparently needs Windows 10 Pro. Now, a very valued member of the Backyard Tech community, Ivan Dormain, suggested it probably needs the OBDCs. Now, initially, I wanted to run Windows, 10, Windows Home, but I've been told it must run Windows 10 Pro. Now, I tried to sell them the advantage of running a Debian-based distro or, or a Ubuntu-based distro, something like that, but no, that was quashed. Some of the comments on part one are not being published due to language. I'm not prepared to put the channel at risk. Now, somewhere in the future, it is possible this computer that is being built will be connected to a network. Now, whether that is an actual network network or connected to the internet. Either which way, between the computer and the outside world, a firewall will be put in. No question about it. But initially, this PC will have no outside connection. Now, admittedly, whilst I'm sure I could have figured out a way to get Wine to run the program, we must keep in mind, Wine doesn't run every Windows application. It runs 90% of them, but not all of them. One comment was give them Solaris and have them run everything off a terminal window. Not gonna happen. It's either Windows, Windows, or I don't do the job. It's as simple as that. So, we're gonna get Windows 7 installed, then I'm gonna run the upgrade path to Windows 10, and then the job will be done. Now, at this point in time, I'm saying at this point in time, we know the computer only has 10 gig. Okay. Windows 10 Pro is heavy. So I'm going to see what I've got in the way of extra RAM stock to bring it up to 16 gig. Okay. We're also going to have to install VLC Media Player has to go in as well. From a web browser point of view, I don't know. Probably nothing at this stage. Highly likely... If the thing does go online, uh, it'll be Firefox. But at this stage, it doesn't need any web. All right, so we're gonna get the software set up today, and get it all tested out. The other thing I'm gonna have to do is install the ATI drivers for that Radeon graphics card, so that we, when I get it to where it's going and get it connected to the projector, um, I can make sure that it is at the right resolution, but I'm not going to do the final graphics setup until it gets delivered to where it's going to be connected on the projector. So, 
Let's return to the projection PC system build, and in part two, let's get Windows installed. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so before we actually do anything, I need to go into advanced mode, and I need to go to uh, boot mode first, don't I? So we need, Secure boot, where are you? There you are. So let's clear the clear secure boot keys. They're cleared. Yes. Okay. Right, so that gets that done. OS type is Windows UFI. Back to there, go to advanced. Okay, we need to turn that on. That's the virtualization. We need it active on all cores. Go back. SATA configuration needs to be AHCI. That's right. We don't want hot plugging of any sort. Now, we need boot option one there we go okay boot override is good to go tool good there okay boot override there it is there save configuration and reset yes So the next thing I've got to do is make sure that it shows up. Oh, that's the wrong USB key I've put in. Ah, oh, damn it. It is too. That's the wrong USB key. Hang on, let me go and change the USB key. Okay, so I've now got the right USB key in. This is my OEM Windows 7. So we've, got, we've got it all set up for Eufy boot and everything like that. So we'll go off and install Windows 7, get that sorted out, and then we'll do the uh, do the big upgrade to Windows 10. I sort of still miss the fact that Windows 7 is one of the fastest Windows operating systems in recent history to actually install. So we're 34% done. So once we get into the rest of it, getting it all sorted out and everything, what I'm going to do, you guys are going to absolutely have 60 fits with me the way I'm going to do this upgrade. But once Windows is all installed, before I even get to Windows 10, there's a couple of things I need to do. Okay, the phone rang. <laughs> so Windows 7 Pro 64-bit is pretty much nearly installed. Uh, I've just got to do the final little bit of setup for this. I'm not going to run the customization yet. I will customize Windows 10 rather than customizing Windows 7. So let's uh, let's get the rest of this setup done and we'll be back. I probably should plug the ethernet lead in too, which I've just done as well. <laughs> okay, so this is nearly finished. Once this is done, we will uh, come back and there's a couple of things I want to install into Windows 7 before I actually do the Windows 10 upgrade. Alrighty, so Windows 7 installed. Now, I was going to actually do something a little bit different, but as you can see, no network, Your Honour. So my plan's gone a little bit south with that, unfortunately. So what I'm now going to do, actually, which I think is the best thing to do, is go and get my Windows 10 ESD. Um, now, the, the other thing is... Um, where this is going, they have a Microsoft account already, which makes life easy. Um, so what I'll do is attach Windows 10 to that Microsoft account. Um, obviously not here. I'll have to do that when we get up to where it's going. But all done now. I didn't show you the last bit of customization. Obviously, I've got to do usernames, passwords, computer name, and identity. And I'm not... Uh, authorized to show all that 
So Windows 7 is done. All right, I'll go find me Windows 10 ESD and we will be back. All righty, old mates, Windows 10 ESD. I don't want to do that. I want to do that and go for setup. Yes. Now, 10 gig of RAM is just not enough for this. Um, I am going to have to... I am going to have to um, take it to 16 gig. There's two reasons behind taking it to 16 gig. One, Windows 10 Pro we know is RAM heavy. Two, the hard drive is only 500 gig. So, I'm, and even though it's a SATA 3, 6 gig hard drive, I want 16 gig of RAM in it just in case, all right? Um, all right, checking PC, getting a few things ready. Now, this is a 1903 ESD. No, it's not. Actually, I think it's an 1809 ESD, but it's not going to matter what ESD it is because I'll run the updates um, shortly. Except... All right. Now, it's not going to be able to check for updates. Obviously, there's no network connection, <laughs> which is obviously problematic. Then again, I may have to get a network connection. It may have a bit of a dummy spit. I'm not saying it will have a dummy spit, but I'm saying it may have a dummy spit. Um, there's a couple, there's one other thing I've got to install post Windows 10. I was going to actually install the ATI drivers now, but without any network, um, it's not going to happen. So I'm going to have to install the ATI stuff after I've done Windows 10. So we want to install Windows 10 Pro. Old mate's lost his mouse. There it is. All right. There we go. Installing Windows 10. So once this gets further along in the installation, we'll come back. As I said, 10 gig is just not enough. Um, even on USB 3. So definitely need to go to 16 gig. This is installing it at the moment. And I'm just watching to see how it goes. The um, general consensus, I think, today... Um, regardless of whether you're running Windows 10 or Linux or some sort of Unix variant is 16 gig. Um, so what I'm going to have to do here, I'm going to have to install this on 10 gig of RAM. Now it is DDR3, um, but I'm going to have to do a bit of RAM matching because I think two of the sticks are faster and they're getting throttled by the two slower sticks, which is common. So what I'm going to do, and I think this is probably going to be the easiest way to do this, is get it set up on 10 gig of RAM, then go hunting for two, you know, say two four stick, two four gig sticks, right? So find two four gig sticks and make this a 16 gig PC. So, um, four lots of four gig at the same speed if i've got it or if i haven't two eight gig sticks at you know 1333 meg or something like that okay so this is now updating and everything so once this is done we will uh once we get further on we'll come back all righty well just over halfway there it uh could take a while, <laughs> but uh, we'll get there. I've really, got, in theory, I've only really got today to get this done because there's a chance I'm going to Bendigo uh, in a week or two. So I want to get this out of the road as quickly as I can, but we're slowly getting there. Very slowly. <laughs> All right, we'll come back when we're closer to being finished. Alrighty, well we're nearly done, slowly, 
and uh, this shouldn't take too much longer I hope um, definitely gonna have to put 16 gig in it it's just too slow on 10 gig now just while I'm on this as well with this computer only being used you know twice maybe three times a week um, I honestly don't see the advantage at least from a user point of view of you know trying to configure the thing up to use some sort of custom kernel it's just a waste of time all right well I missed the uh, the reboot <laughs> I was upstairs but it looks like Windows 10 has installed it has so there we go Windows 10 now I'm going to explain something at the end of this video um, I know a lot of you out there are currently throwing things and yelling at your screens in a, in an attempt to possibly punch old mates lights out and then kicking between the two goal coasts goal posts and you know smashing out over the park for for six um essentially I'm not going to shove Linux or Solaris or FreeBSD or OpenBSD or NetBSD or Dragonfly or anything like that down th this organization's throat when they've specifically asked for Windows. And I'll talk about that at the end of this video. But uh, we'll just get this set up and get a few other bits and pieces done and we'll come back. All right. Now... For the purposes of this PC, I'm actually going to turn a lot of this off because it is not needed for what this is going to be used for and definitely not location. So I'm turning all that off because they don't need it. What they don't need with this Windows 10, I'm not installing. All right, so, you know, find my device, ink and typing, tailored experiences, you know, diagnostics, location, all this type of stuff, advertising ID, they don't need all that, all right? So I'm just going to turn it off. And there we are, Windows 10. Now, it's found the network, which is good. Uh, oh, I'll say yes for the time being. All right, let me go and get a couple of things organized and we'll come back. Okay, so for the purposes of this, I'm grabbing the ATI Radeon Auto Detect tool and uh, I'm going to run that. Yes. Install. So I'm going to run that and then I will auto detect the ATI graphics driver. Now, I've got to explain this here because people are going to have a massive dummy spit with me. Initially, I'm just going to set this up for this monitor that I'm using at the moment. But when this gets delivered and installed, I will obviously set it up per the projector that it's going to run on. Okay. Um, now, the projector is dual VGA. All right. So I've got a DVI to VGA converter. Um, it is dual v VGA, or if I want, I can actually run, what I might end up doing is running dual screen and have the desktop coming off the onboard and run the VGA to the projector here. I'll have to work that out when once this gets delivered. Okay. Uh, auto accept express install or custom install i think we'll just do an express install for the purposes of this now what are you doing i'm hoping you'll download it there it is all right so once this is done we'll come back and there we are a catalyst amd catalyst is installed uh, we'll go to information go to hardware so it is a 5450 series graphics card on a PCI Express 2 platform, which is fine. So we don't need to change anything there. And there we go. All done. 
So, well, the next thing I've got to do is VLC player, isn't it? Hang on, let me do VLC and we'll come back. All right, well, apologies for the focus, but I'm going to run that straight off. I'm not going to bother downloading and saving it. I'm just going to run it. Uh, yes. English. Next, next, next. Oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, it's got to run all, doesn't it? Yep. Next. Show the details, make sure it installs properly. So far, so good, which is nice. And there we go. All done. So the only other thing now is I've got to get my hands on the program to be used. Continue. I've just got, oh, I've got to do defaults, don't I? Hang on. Uh, apps. All right. Cattle's controlled is right. I need to change the default apps. Music player needs to change to VLC. Oh, that didn't work like it was supposed to. Hang on. Default apps. VLC. Hmm. Let me try and figure out why that's not changing over. Hang on. All right, so for the most part... <laughs> It's all done. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do now is a quick reset and then uh, I'll have to run all the updates and everything. So let me do that and we'll come back. Alrighty. Well, I've just had to restart it again. Um, the There it goes. There we are. All right. So all done. The only thing I've got to do now is I'll go off and run all the updates and everything for Windows 10 and get that sorted out. But for the most part, job done. So the new projection PC is finished, done, dusted and sorted, which is really good. Now, I need to um, do a couple of justifications, which I'll explain back at the desk. I know some of you are probably vomiting into receptacles you've got at hand because I've gone and installed Windows 10. As I've said right through this build, this is what I was told to install. Now, look, I'm not going to go around and, you know, try and slam Linux down their throat or a BSD or Solaris or something like that when they've requested Windows. The other thing too is, even if I'd put Linux on it, there is no guarantee that the projection software they're using will function properly in Wine. It might run, but it may not function per what they need. And I openly admit, I'm not good enough to rewrite a Windows emulator in Wine and mod it to make the thing work perfectly. The other side to that is I honestly can't be bothered. So I know a lot of you are out there are screaming, wanting to punch my lights out, kick me out of the park, but that's what I was told to install. It has to run Windows and it has to run Windows 10 Pro. So it was lucky I had the bits. Now it's 1903. I'm going to run all the updates and everything like that today. But basically, job done. So the Catalyst Center's con in already installed. Um, configuration between control screen and projector, I will sort that out when it gets installed. Now, I know you're all going to want me to show a video of it. I've got to get permission. Okay, because of where it's going. Now, one person I know very well, he's a very, very dear friend of mine, knows exactly where it's going. Okay, he knows, but I need to get permission first. I'm not going to go in there with a camera and tell them to go and get nodded. I have to video this for my YouTube channel. 
the type of organization that it's going into may or may not want me to video it. Okay, so I have to ask permission. If I don't get permission and they say no, I'm not doing it. It's as simple as that. Okay, so yes, I know you're screaming at me. I've installed Windows 10. Yes, I know. All right, fine. I should have jammed a custom FBSD or NetBSD kernel down there and dropped the window maker on it and told a bunch of elderly people, stiff, this is what you have to run. Not going to happen. Sorry. So there we are. Projection PC build done. Windows installed. Uh, obviously, I've got to do the projection program and uh, we're done. But essentially, another computer build. Anyway, guys, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. I'll catch you tonight for the convos. Have a good one. Cheers.